Welcome back my comrades, I am Victor Barisov and today we are continuing the Fallout 76 playthrough of all the secondary locations and today is the Ash Sheep Zone B and I am going to be doing something a bit different with these videos now guys, I'm going to try a new editing format style. So what it is, is I'm going to get to the location and then I'm going to record and speak. So basically I'm going to try and chop out all the travelling part and all the fighting part. Just going to see how this works because I know the videos are a bit long when I leave them in. So I want to try and chop them out and see if it's any better. If not, but you guys will probably be able to tell best. But if you don't like it, let me know in the comments. If you do like it, let me know in the comments as well. But I'll be back in a minute guys while I'm at the first location. Right guys, we are now here at Military Comms Tower Kitty, it is called. And this is location number 15 in the Ash Sheep. And this location just overlooks, as you can see, these lovely two cabins with a toxic lake and the air purification station just over there. And if you are looking for this location, it is right here on the map, just in between these rocks, and it's just off the Hornwright Air Purification Site number one. And at this location, as you can see here, it's just a basic military tower. Nothing special like the others. I was hoping for like some sandbags, no dead skeleton, little MG nest. But no, there's nothing at this one, just this tower. So hopefully they may end up developing this site a bit better because I've seen like we've seen all the other ones that are much more developed than this one but who knows what they're going to do at this location but we will soon see when the quest eventually arrives what is related to them because there is no quest for it yet but it is listed in the guide the next location I will be going to is number 16 that is the cultist totem east of bleeding kits so when I get there guys, I will show you that location. Right guys, we are now at location at number 16 and that is the Cultum's Totem East of Bleeding Kate. And this is the location here if you're on for it. So I'm just right here on the map. It is very dangerously close to the Fisher site and it's close to the Raider camp as well. Lucky enough there's no Raiders in the game yet, but who knows, they may come in Wastelanders, I might make a more dangerous location. But as you can see here, we have two cars both rusted burnt out pick, pick out the pickup trucks I can't speak this one we have a lovely iron deposit so if you want to you can build your camp here and this is a mothman totem according to the book so as you can see here we've got this lovely one here with gas mask on it's got all the ground burnt a dead skeleton yeah we've got his rib cage I think that's his skull buried in the ground and then we've got this big one here was covered in blood and has a lot of skulls and I think that's a deer skull right at the top. Yes, yeah, so this is this location here guys. Not much going on at this one but you can get like a few bits of logs if you want to. The iron deposit and you've got a nice cultist mothman tome. So you know what we've got to do guys when we reach a mothman tome don't you? We've got to try and summon them. So let's have a go. Yeah guys, doesn't look like he's going to turn up today. What a shame. One of these days guys, we will get him to turn up by doing that Mothman dance at one of his tomes. And he will appear and have fun with us if he doesn't murder us. Hopefully he's going to be a friendly type Mothman when we next meet him. But guys, I am going to go off to the next location. And that is number 17. And that is Hilltop Sludge Hut. So see you in a minute. Right guys, we are now here at the Hilltop Sludge Hut. But we know this is something different now. This is actually being changed from a secondary location to a primary location in the game. So as you can see, it is now called the Pylon Ambush Site. And this site was uh, for the Sheep Squash quest, as we know. But originally, this site did not have any of these pylons here, as you can see. What I used to attack the Sheep Squash. But I think Alsia has stayed the same for the secondary location. But like in this secondary location, 
could find a level 2 lock safe in the sinking marsh. You can find a ton of dead ghouls here. I just killed all these quickly when I came here. And if we go into the cabin, we can see some rough buildings with some ventilation. A computer to deal with a sheep squash quest. Some different bits of food, chems, all that good stuff you want. But yeah, guys, it is, it is unique to see how Bethesda is now using these secondary locations and changing them into primary locations. This is the first secondary location I know of so far was being changed into a primary location for an event and a quest. Was quite unique in its way, me I can't say, guys. But if you are looking for this location, it's right here. It's now got a permanent map marker, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding this one. You just have to wander up here from the burning mine or from the widow's perch, and you should find this site straight away. There may be a vent going on here at some time, so that vent is a bit dangerous. I must warn you if you come to this location. If it isn't on, you're perfectly safe just to explore it, kill the ghouls, and grab the loot, guys. So I am going to move on to the next location, was number 18. Now it's the roadside stalls by the uncanny caves so i will see you in an hour right guys we are here at location number 18 and this is the roadside stalls at the uncanny caves as you can see this location is quite nice actually i've wandered past here quite a few times so i've now relocked in so we've got a couple of web we've got one weapon here what's the give me back job signs it says please do not feed the animals so no sign another weapon we've got the signs of the uncanny caves where yeah, is that an enemy? Hopefully it doesn't come over here. We've got another weapon here buried into the ground. We have some potato chips. Some nice corn if you need some food. Oh, we've got a dead skull. So this person died on the job. We've got some more rubbish. Uh, some miscellaneous junk. Some canned dog food. A safe. A radio. That's just a small location. If you're looking for this one, guys, it's just right here on this stretch of road. So if you see this line here, it's just right at the end here. And it's just directly from the Uncanny Caves. So you've got a good little stop down there to get some more loot inside the Uncanny Caves and do some missions there. Or you can just come here at this little roadside stop, get some corn, some miscellaneous loot, and continue your travels onwards. And we do have a few little vehicles here, nothing to loot in them. But this is location number 18. Next location I'm going to is number 19 and that is the concrete, oh, cement pipes, excavation and railroad carriages site. And I will see you in a moment. Right guys, we are now here at location number 19 and that is the cement pipe, excavation and railroad carriage site. And at this location here, it is quite a big one, may I say. It's a nice sized one. I can see that. If you are looking for it, it's right here on this little crossroad section here. Just off the Rollins Work Camp and just up from the abandoned mine shaft free and just down from the burning mine. So if we go down on this side first, guys, what can we find? Well, we just find a little crate, a little chain linked fence to block you from entering. Watch, well, you can easily hop over if you've got the muscle wheel or you can just climb around this way but you do find some signs we'll tell you about the protests going on here a few destroyed vehicles and there is scorched at this location there can be super mutants but today there was uh, scorched here was quite handy for me because the new event is going on what gives you christmas uh, christmas gifts that event is still going on so i was lucky enough to get one but if we go down here you'll see this is the first carriage we can go into was well, just some concrete pipes for a couple of dead workmen with an old possum next to them. Sadly, they died on the job and they didn't finish delivering the concrete pipes. Next one is this little control booth here, completely destroyed. It does have some miscellaneous loot like telephones, lighters, other bottles, stuff like that. But if we go to this orange carriage and jump in, there is a safe in here. Was a level one safe. Your fire extinguisher, a few hides here, and a few different other lootable items, as you can see. If we go all the way down to the control tower, all the way over here, you'll see one dead festive scorched, another dead one. I'm just going to take your ammo, and you'll see a load of meat just lying on the ground, hanging up. So it does look like 
and the super mutants was try to set up a home here today but the size scotch just beat them but if we go in here you will find a missile launcher sometimes some bobby pins combination wrench different of our miscellaneous lootable items and a level two safe you can pick so at this location you get two safes to pick well it can provide good loot and a few of our miscellaneous junk items so not a bad location overall and the next location i'm going to is number 20 and it's the proper's heads shack and i will see you in a minute when i'm there right guys we are here at the next location that is number 20 the proper's heads shack basically it's like a pillar prop so that one up there so a wind generator and if you're looking for this location it's right here just a little bit off the burning mine and just down from the lewisburg and in this location we can find one dead skeleton if we hop over his fence we find a toolbox with no loot in it there is a ruined shack so it looks like this was a functioning shack at one time but sadly the landslide claimed it but if we go up this cliff to where he's got his generator it's best if you go around but if you've got more super you, you can jump up here oh there was some festive scotch up here i did not realize that but yes once you take care of all the pests you can have a look up here so he's got a billboard it's got a nice little wind generator what can be destroyed i believe so let's see yep there you go that just blows up if you want to nothing really special about but you can repair it again so let's repair it and i believe if you build your camp here you could get free power off this windmill possibly i'm not sure about that i've never built here i've not seen anybody build here so that could be a possibility to get free power guys don't quote me on that one but it could be well, that's this location, just a small little location with a little bit of a story about it. The next location I'm going to is Lake Reinhold's Dump. So I'll see you in a minute. Right guys, we are here at number 21, Lake Reinhold's Dump. I cannot, never can pronounce people's names correctly, guys. But yes, this is the dump location. So if you're looking for this one, it's just here on the railway line, just down from Lake, that's his name there. Or I can't pronounce Lake Ryan Dolls, something like that. Abandoned mine, just down from Binding Mineshaft 3 as well. But this is the dump, so it's just near this one here. But when we go in, guys, you can see there's a couple of destroyed vehicles here, what's just been here from the war. Yeah, it's a combat shotgun, a couple of bottles of empty vodka, I believe. Oh no, one full bottle and one empty bottle of vodka. Always good for a drink while you're on the job. A suitcase with miscellaneous loot. Some nice artwork as you can see. He's done some nice artwork. I don't know if you can read the plaques. I don't believe you can. No, the plaques are empty at the minute. Hopefully Bevesta adds some to these plaques. Because it will be quite nice. Then when we go into here. is a little makeshift office. So we've got a bin with some rubbish. With different miscellaneous rubbish loot in. Got more miscellaneous junk. You do have to jump over this desk. Sadly to get to the back. But we do have more miscellaneous items so you could walk away with some loot here if you want to or it's a good local location you can set up your camp at and just impress people with your artwork you could say but right guys that is this location not too much here but it is a nice little location was overlooking the famous mountain uh cliff top mansions but right guys i'm gonna go on to the next location what is 22 that's a small raider camp so i will see you right guys we are here at location 22 and that's the small raiders camp as you can see this is a small one. Oh, has enemies just respawned in yes looks like an enemy has just respawned in that's what i like about this christmas event guys while it's still on the enemies seem to respawn in a little bit faster but oh well right at this camp we can find a radio what can i switch off a pistol some wood some miscellaneous loot a couple of dirt bikes it looks like these raiders at one point were using more bikes to get around and they had eventually ended up here yeah but they do have some good stuff like mines which was handcuffs so maybe they were up to some kinky in this bed we'll never know because the person is dead uh, it looks like we had a female rider at one time who has turned into a skeleton and a recent corpse has died while stumbling upon the raider camp 
but you can get a few explosives here and it's all round creepy location but if you are looking for this one it's just right here slap bang in the middle of everything so you've got the three cliff top mountains up here or mansions got the um lake here just down there and the band mine shaft so let's oh and that is this nice location guys but i will be back for the next location right guys we are now back so i had end that last location quite abruptly and uh, just my xbox decided to update automatically for some strange reason when i have auto updates turned off so that was an unusual way to end a abrupt location but we are now back guys with location 23 oak tree visit an old oak tree dead but still at the top of a hill and that is this one here guys so if we just wander up this hill here as you can see it is sadly a dead oak tree but it still stands at the top of a tree with some things oh i did clear this location but it turns out the game has spawned some mutants in so since i killed all the scorched here just so let's deal with them there we go quick and easily dealt with but at this location guys we can find a dead woman sitting near this bench with miscellaneous food and drinks container you can find other bits of food around this location you have a ammo box some more food and you find some more breeze blocks this barrel is a little bit radioactive so be careful when you're that one but when you're up here guys you can see the ruins of what's that town called village and you can see other great views of the town down there as well and you get other views like this one but if you are looking for this location guys it's just right here and amongst here so just over from Nelson's End, up from Willage, and just over from Hornet's testing site too. And the next location we are going to go to, guys, is number 24. Now it's Route 84 Turnout, a cluster of rusting military vehicles. So I will see you for that location. Right, guys, we are here at location number 24, the Rust, the Route 84 Turnout, a cluster of rusty military vehicles. As you can see here, we have a couple of military jeeps was rusting out with a dead skeleton a canoe on. They also have this pickup here with a bit of miscellaneous loot. There is also this military truck what seems to be parked with another dead person in the back. And is next to a good old flagpole of the US of A. Not too bad this location, not a lot you can do here, not a lot to loot either. But if you are looking for this location, it is right here bit closer to village this time and it's just down from the old oak tree location what was number 23 so yes not too bad of a location but not much to do here i would say but our next location we will be going to is 25 and all it's got is gnome sweet gnome camp so i will see you for that one right guys we are at a location called gnome sweet gnome camp this one is just down from on right testing site too. As you can see here guys to start off with we have a golf cart with a skeleton. But over here we have a few gnomes with his golf bag being buried with this person. So I'm not sure what happened here. Did this woman grab a golf club and kill her partner and hire him in there with the gnomes and try and bury them? I'm not too sure. Then if we go over here we find two gnomes kicked out the back of this van with this gnome on top who's been cheeky and it is a grifton steel van as well so I'm not sure what they were doing but if we go here and find a, a pickup truck pulling a trailer inside the trailer no gnomes i am surprised nothing in the fridge nothing on top either strange location but it did hit a metal pole of some sort if we go here, we'll find a dead person sleeping on a couch. Quite interesting. And then over here, we find a big bonfire with a few more gnomes on it. So I'm not sure were these people trying to kill the gnomes because they were being attacked by gnomes. Or were the gnomes trying to kill them and take their camp. Maybe we'll never know. Maybe we will. We can only suspect what happened. But if you are looking for this location, like I said, it is just here, guys. 
just off the whole night testing site. Quite a fun little location. I don't make, oh, you can't build here. That is interesting. I think it's because you're too close to the Hornwright site. But if you could build here, it would have been a good location to build at. The next location we are going to is number 26. That is the Cultist's Altar. So I will see you for that one. So if I show you on the map, I am right here. There's Hornwright's testing site. And this one is a very creepy location. I killed all the cave crickets. For some reason they were coming here. As you can see guys, we've got, a, we've got a few skeletons in the water, as you can see here. This is just a mass grave of dead skeletons, as you can see. Was well, very creepy to say the least. Then if we go up here, we find a person with a cultist dagger sacrificing this person. This is the first time I've ever seen this. And a couple of skulls. And if we go up here, we have a cultist totem. I do not believe this was to the Mothman. I believe this is to the other creepy one. But we have a lot of skulls and bones up here. This one is just all around creepy. Because if I stand up here, guys, you can see the amount of skeletons in there. Person being sacrificed and that one. And this is an all round amazing, cool location, guys, if you like cultists. Don't know if you can build here. Yes, you can build here. So if you're into your cult uh, set and cult worshipping, you could come to this location and build at it and have an amazing, creepy cult camp thing, I guess. But yes guys, that is in this location. Next location I'm going to is 27. There's the orange taped scavengers stall. So I'll see you for that one. Right guys, we are here at the orange taped scavengers stall. So as you can see, it is not much here to say the least guys. But I will show you this location on the map first. It is right here. Uh, just over from home my testing site 2. And just drop over from the Fisher site. So this is a dangerous location if you're going to explore here. I can say that, guys. But I was just attacked by these dudes. Class of me as a protester. I wasn't even protesting. I was scavenging. It's a difference. But if you come here, you can find some weapons sometime. Some miscellaneous loot around. Another radio. Alcohol. You can find food sometimes here. Yep. There's also different bits of miscellaneous junk and some bottle caps if you were to take them. Foot locker, some more beer and other food. Ammunition. If we go around this side, we can go inside the truck. And there is a little camp inside where a dead settler. It's got a level 3 safe, some mentats, and some other chems and first aid items. So this location is all around a good location to scavenge. A bit dangerous because you could end up with random AI spawns will attack you. Or you could end up with a fisher site being active and attacking you as well. So it's a risk, but it's a worthwhile risk, guys, I would say. And the next location I am going to is number 28, and it's called Top of the Heap. That's all it says, so I will see you for that one. Right guys, I am up at this location, number 28, when they said top of the heap. They literally mean the top of the heap, guys. Right, as you can see at this location, all there is, is just an orange chair, what you can't even sit on, for shame. A dead skeleton, a chair and a camera. Well, a table and a camera. So you can see we get stunning views of the ash heap, but there is one problem with this location, guys. Is technically in the outer bounds area because if I wander this way, you'll see the fence. You can hop over it, lucky enough, and go this way, but it's still out of the bounds area because that fence there, if you hop over that one, try and go up there, it's outer bounds. Like, I tried to climb this mountain um, this way, try and go up that way. That way is outer bounds, as you can see by the fence down there. So, the way you have to get up this one is, guys, I would advise bringing a jetpack or have a master wheel. Or if you don't have any of them, you can get up, but you have to wander very close to this cliff's edge, all the way down there. And up there, as you can see, starts to go uphill, and you have to kind of jump and climb up that hill and run along this steep bank until you get up here. And then you have this nice location. I don't know if you can build up here. You can build up here, so this could be a possibly a very nice location to build at one day. Just to have your own throne overlooking all of the ash sheep, I guess. But yes, if you're on for this one, it's right up here, guys. Just off from the Fisher site and the Strike Row camp and the Hornwright industry. This was a difficult one to find, guys. I thought I was never going to get up here. 
Due to the fact Bevesta had put the barriers out saying, Oh, don't say Bevesta's there, blocked off while they're on secondary locations. But lucky enough, not. But this is a nice location. Next location I'm going to is the Village Miners Blockade. And I will see you for that location, guys. Right, guys, we are now at the next location, what is 29 Village uh, Miners Blockade. And at this one, guys, we will find a truck with some miscellaneous junk in and empty paint cans. A blockade where it says jobs. Bits of miscellaneous debris everywhere, but you can find some aluminium or aluminium vents. So you could get some good junk off that. You'll find a half buried skeleton. Oh, so what I'm even doing is patrols. Do I have my rifle? I do not have my rifle out. Oh no, because it's broken. Okay, we're going to be trying to be quick before he turns up and sees us. But we do have a rusted truck here. Uh, another bulldozer pushing debris into here. So looks like that we're trying to clear the blockade when the bombs were dropping. But the overseer's house is just down there as well if you're looking for the quest marker. But if you are looking for this location, guys, it's right, ooh, right here where I am. Just over from the Barrett Mineshaft 1 and just up from Willage. Next location where I go to is the Golden Quarry Pond. So I'll see you for that. Right guys, we are now at the next location, what is number 30, Golden Quarry Pond. A sunken pond with plants gold and the rest here. So as you can see, we have these two water tanks, pickup truck. As if we wander up this pipe, you'll see where they've been pumping the water out over the years. Oh, these big two tanks into these containers for water and they've been taken away but if we do jump down here carefully we will find a destroyed uh, military jeep some more containers and a few gold vents so you could get some nice gold from here but if you are looking for this location guys the golden pond is just right up here just up from the village station and village town and just over from the Holmright Air Purification Site 3. The next location we are going to, guys, is the Sludge Trailer. That's the Moffay one, so back in a minute. Right, guys, we are now here at location 31, the Sludge Trailer. As you can see, right in front of us, it says an iron deposit. Behind us is the trailer. So as you can see, we've got different bits of junk in there, a teddy bear, Explosives crit. We have a Nuka Shine ball, so you could end up waking up here if you drink Nuka Shine. Another teddy bear watching the TV. And different bits of junk scattered all about this site. And it is just a nice, lovely little trash heap, I guess you could call it. And you do have someone who's in a pond with his motorbike. So it looks like it was a fun time he had here before the bombs dropped. But if you are looking for this location, guys, is right here just off from the red rocket fueling station and just off from the air purification site free so there isn't much to this one but it's a good little location if you need iron deposit or if you need some other junk our next location i'll be going to guys is the military comms tower so i'll see you for that one right guys we are at the military comms tower and this location is number 32 military comms tower uh, it's the mount blair self one so as you can see here there isn't much of this one either the other ones like i said were more decorated they had like sandbags spikes mg nests dead soldiers but yeah this one's just a no basic one but this these towers are part of a quest what isn't in the game yet so we might be able to get that quest eventually if not it should be interesting but if you are looking for this one, it's just right here. So nothing much to see at this location. But if you do want to come near it, it's a good one. But you can't build at these ones, guys. Sadly, because they are part of a quest eventually. But in the next location we are going to, both of them are together. And I'll explain more when I get there. Is the Red Star Roadside Home and Vault 63. So back in a minute. Right, guys, we are here at location 33 and 34. 33 is the Red Star Roadside Home and the one next to it is 34 was Vault 63. And Vault 63, I think it was meant to be like the Nuclear Winter Vault, the Sax Vault. Where it was never meant to be a primary location. 
weapon is meant to be destroyed by chance, because that exact one is all the way up here and it doesn't have a map marker, you just randomly find it, it's a secondary location now. But this one was made a primary location, because so I think it's part of like a main quest what's eventually coming. So yes, 34 was now changed into a primary location, so this is no one was eventually changed into prime location. Well, I'll just show you it quickly. I won't go into the vault because it's a load of load screens and there's nothing there yet until I do something with it. But as you can see, there is blasting caps, different bits of loot and the rest. And if you go open that door there, it leads down to a cave, what will eventually lead into the vault. So yes, that will be eventually a vault raid mission when that comes out. I'm not sure when. But it is planned to come out eventually, as I said. But this one is still a secondary location, it doesn't have a map marker or anything. So we'll explore the red side um, house. So up here, oh, if we can jump up, we have a load of moonshine jugs. So it's one of their moonshine. And then going around, you can see the red star where someone has been sitting on their throne or watching the area. We have a destroyed basement few bits of paperwork downstairs and nothing much upstairs this location just really has the moonshine jug a mirror and some miscellaneous stuff and I'm over in Columbia now because I took my tats. I'll sort out my loot in a minute but yes guys that was this location here but if you look for the roadside manor house it's just right next to vault 63 just here and that is this area here guys the next location I am going to is number 35 and that is called a Vetterbird Crash Site. So I will see you for that one. Right guys, we are at the next location was location 35, Vetterbird Crash Site. As you can see here, not much. I was attacked by a few animals. Uh, mainly wolves might spawn here by the looks of it. Not sure what other spawns might be here, but just be careful when you do come here. As you can see, it's just a crashed Vetterbird. Not much here, yeah, no real loot I could find in this area. There is just like this one crate with some miscellaneous, some other things. And there was this broken off wing was landed up here. It's a very unusual crash site because I'll show you whereabouts it is. Just over by the forest area, just over from the vaults, or from the ground mine headquarters and skids row and the fisher site. So I'm not sure if this was heading towards the vault with people on board to evacuate them or if it was trying to evacuate home right site like it was trying to get up to them helicopter pads and evacuate the rich but sadly the EMP blast would have destroyed its engines and it made its final approach and crashed here. The pilot was catapulted out and killed instantly sadly. So that looks like what has happened at this location here. But we are going to move on to the next one. And number 36 is Wild Wolf's Homestead. So back in a minute. Right guys, we are now at the next location. What is 36? Wild Wolf's Homestead. And this is a farm homestead. What is here? I'll show you on the map. It's just here. Right over from our hands my headquarters i've got a warning you guys if you come into this farm be very careful because i did die once because these three super mutants one two three all had fat man launchers and as i approached just from the west over there all i heard was a loud whistling and a nuke went off right on that road and i was obliterated instantly by three nuclear weapons yes so that was quite a quick flash and an end to my character's experience. So that's now Spetsna Ranger has now been buried and I am in this person. So at this camp we can find a mute fruit camp um, greenhouse with a little thing going across. For my lead upstairs but it doesn't. House you can't sadly get into but there is some windmills out the back. There's no real crops out the back here sadly but I thought there might have been, but there isn't much to this site, guys, to be honest. There is a anyway, evil gnome just overlooking where this wrench is. There is a few breeze blocks, bits of wood, some food, a couple of weapons, and some other miscellaneous junk. But like I said, guys, when you do come to this location, be careful. Because there may be three super mutants with fat men, 
or other weapons want me to take you out instantly because I am wearing full marine armor under this outfit. But yeah, I don't think they could save me from three different mini nuke shells. But guys, the next location I'm going to go to is location 37 and that is the miners roadblock. So I will see you for that. Right guys, we are now at the next location where is 37 miners roadblock. Since this is a more significant roadblock structure what is leading up to their mansions. If you're looking for this one, it's on the crossroads here and just over from the Hornwright estate. So you can see there was now a smaller blockade here what looks like they've managed to clear and push the debris from. But this is a much bigger one. As you can see here guys, they've built a little tent or the raider, I think the raiders built that later on. But as you can see they've used blockades, had their job signs, put a truck here to stop anyone moving it, had numerous other vehicles to block behind it. They have formed a blockade ready to fight anybody who came to take them. And there is ammunition here. I think this may not be from the war. So I don't think the miners will pick up explosives and weapons to take them on. Even though they did blow up a mansion. So I'm not really sure which law side they're from. But this is location number 37. That is the miners roadblock. This is a more major roadblock. I would say more fortified. The next location we're going to is 38. And that is the Halloween Horror Hamlet. So I'll see you for that. Right guys, I am back and we are at location 38, Halloween Horror Hamlet. And first thing I've got to say is guys, be very careful when coming up to this location. I would advise power armor or having some high level weapons and armor. Because I don't know who did the spawns this location, but I did die. I will show you on the map. The location I am at is just here for the Horror Hamlet. Not too far from Homewright's estate. But I did die up here about three times. Because I don't know who did the spawn markers, but they are very dangerous. Basically, I encountered Liberace here. Then on this road, Super Mutants spawned in with uh, cow machine guns, fat man's laser, laser rifles, and all them jolly good big guns. So they did quite a lot of damage. And then just up there at them other farms, on that side there was Scorch spawning. And on that side, Ghouls spawned in on that farm. So this turned into a four-way fight versus me. And I wasn't wearing power armor, and I died three times until I bro broke out my power armor and murdered them all with some good old fashioned weaponry. So yeah, be advised you may end up in a big firefight in this location. But to explore this location guys, we have some Halloween artwork on the outside. As you can see, quite nice. There is the dead liberator as well dealt with, or well, quite easier than the super mutants and the scorch eagles. Oh! And now there's mole rats spawning in. So yeah, be definitely advised to bring power armor. But if we go inside guys, we find different Halloween attire. We find the creepy candy fan, Mr. Fuzzy. There is a fridge, nothing in it. There is some chems. There is a hide thing behind here. Now if we go down to the basement, there is few miscellaneous junk items down here and a dead body uh, just a settler so just be advised you may find a dead settler down here a table a couple of washing machines and if we go up to the top floor there is some more mysterious junk oh and a wolf has spawned in here hello wolf be gone so yeah there is some more chems so this place is good if you're look, looking for chems or if you're looking to level up and looking for an XP fight, come to this location I would recommend. So this is the last location of this area. So that was Horror Hamlet. I'll just show you that one again. So yes, this area here is a good location if you're looking for XP. Because as you can see there guys, I had a mole rat spawning on me and a wolf spawn on me as I already cleared this location. So there was wolves, mole rats, liberators, super mutants, ghouls and scorched here. So a great location guys if you're looking for a firefight. If you don't really have the best of equipment, I wouldn't come here just yet. I'd stay away because I did have to bring out my excavator power armor and my high powered melee weapons to kill them. But yes guys, that is this area it's completely complete. So the next zone we will be moving on to is the Savage Divide Zone A. So I will be permanently wearing this power armor when I'm in that zone because that zone is a death zone as we know that's quite high level but yes guys this was a completely different video I did today uh, it was something different 
If you liked it, let me know in the comments. If you didn't like it, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I could do about changing it. But if you did like this video, guys, give it that thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it that thumbs down. If you have any questions at all about today's video or any of our videos like that, guys, put them in the comments below and I will try and answer them to the best of my ability I can, guys. But until next time, I am Victor Barisov, signing off. Until next time, guys. Bye.